Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat malam, apa kabar? <laughs> hari ini saya bareng teman saya Mirka Kenapa saya hari ini bareng dia? Karena menurut saya hidup dia ini menarik, pengalamannya menarik Kenapa menarik? Ikutin vlog ini sampai habis Alright Mirka, so I told them why I want to talk to you in this vlog because I think personally your life is very interested, interesting, sorry, especially uh, about your traveling journey, right? So, by the way guys, Mirka has been visited 120 countries out of 195 or 193 countries in this world. 194. 194 now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Da, jadi dari 194 negara di dunia ini, Mirka udah ke 120 negara. Saya tuh yang baru ke 20 sekian negara di, di dunia ini aja tuh kayak udah bangga banget, apalagi ke 120 negara. So I told them like I only been travel to 20 something countries and I already like wow, I'm kind of cool, you know. What about you like traveling to 120 <laughs> countries, you know? So traveling is my big addiction. Probably this is my only addiction. I feel really like the need, need, deep need to travel. And if I'm sitting for one in one place for too long time, I'm I'm feeling feeling I need to go. I need to go and to go to a new place and visit something new and, and discover new places, meet new people, learn something new. Because traveling for me is also learning. Learning about the places, about the culture. Um, I walk around and I have my eyes open, my ears open and I learn through traveling. That's the best school of life. There you go. She said that actually traveling is uh, the school of life or uh, sekolah kehidupan then that's the thing that you cannot get anywhere else but when you travel right so what actually your travel style are you like the fancy one or you kind of like just a laid-back traveler you're a backpacker or how's that I am a backpacker and I'm a backpacker since many many years and I really love this uh, style of traveling because uh, it lets me to meet people and uh, feel the country much better but sometimes I spoil myself also for staying in the nice places so I can stay one night in the hostel and the next night I can go to a nice hotel with a great view over the, the mountains so I'm, I'm kind of mixing us a little bit and also what I really like a lot is mixing, meeting the people so that's why I'm using different uh, networks uh, while traveling so uh, couch surfing or hostel Thank sister mm -hmm. or, or other kind of uh, networks so that I love traveling alone. This is my style of traveling. I like going solo because um, yeah, I like being independent and I, I have a very active style of traveling. But then I like staying with the local people and experiencing also the country through their own eyes and not only through what we can find in the guidebooks like Lonely Planet or something else. So it's kind of like mixed travel style and you know, sometimes it's like backpacking, sometimes also like fancy one, sometimes you just stay with locals, like I said, it's a very mixed Yes, exactly. Style. And uh, usually I, I will be just getting a snacks on the go while you are sightseeing, but sometimes I will be like, yeah, I want to eat in this very nice restaurant with this very nice view or with this very nice rating and I will go for it because Yes, uh, I'm a person who doesn't like um, waste the money for unnecessary things but then mm -hmm. also if there is this kind of experience that I read that in this country really this restaurant or this kind of dish is something that you need to experience I'm like always thinking okay this is once in the lifetime experience I'm going for it and the same way I don't mind to spend money on the special activities like paragliding, rafting, diving so like I, I would be like um, saving money on the accommodation, on the food, on the going with the public transport or walking from the bus station to the hostel uh, or hotel but then if I want to go diving in the, you can yes, in the very great place I would just go for it if yeah. I want to uh, if I want to do the rafting or if I want to live in the jungle in the Amazon and this is like some very special experience I would go for it mm -hmm. because I always think that 
I'm here only one time because I'm this kind of person that doesn't really come back again and again to the same location. I'm a person who keeps on discovering mm -hmm. always the, the new places. Mm -hmm. So that's why if I come somewhere, I'm trying like to have these very diverse experiences and uh, and try a little bit of, uh, of everything. And this is what I do when traveling. I go for architecture, I go for the ruins, for the museums, I go for the good coffee, for the good food, for meeting people. People. I go for the great hikings and uh, and the landscapes and for mm. the swimming on the beaches so I'm like a person that needs to take it all and have as much experiences as possible in the short time okay so during this traveling you've met a lot of people right like locals and of course another tourists and everything actually what were your favorite parts meeting people like uh, the best is if we actually but kind of like your favorite interactions your mm -hmm. favorite part meeting new people okay so uh, the best thing is when you meet somebody and you just find out that you have something in common with them that you have a common friend for example or uh, I, I told you a few days ago this interesting story when I asked uh, on, in Athens on the Acropole mm -hmm. one girl to take photos uh, for me and while she was taking photos from me I started to chat with her and ask her for the, her country of origin and then we found out that she's actually my co-worker and so of course we never met before but we have a common friends which we contacted immediately and uh, even we are right now on Crete and when I arrived from Crete I saw that one of my co-workers he posted that he is here on, on Facebook and we were just two minutes apart from each other the moment when we contacted e each other so huh. sometimes it's a new people sometimes it's old people and sometimes you meet a travel on the way and you become friends and then you connect to each other sure. in the Facebook and then uh, you you try to connect again while traveling uh, in yeah. another place and uh, and you go discover places together so so yeah I, I really like uh, this and also I like meeting just people who live in the country and to uh, this kind of thing like okay this is the best coffee shop this is I'm, I'm getting I'm living here since 10 years I'm getting a coffee always in this coffee shop this is the best coffee in town so I listen to this kind of thing and I go there for the coffee and I really feel like yes this coffee tastes good so so this is uh, also about this kind of advice is go and eat in that place go mm -hmm. and have a walk according to, uh, along that pathway there will be a very ni nice beach and maybe also because like I'm this kind of open person that is chatting even sometimes to the random <laughs> sure, sure. people so that's why they give me this kind of uh, advices and they, they share their experiences with me okay and then when you travel you cannot separate with food there's always food the you know delicious food or kind of like weird food or like what kind of food is this you know so actually what was the strangest the craziest food that you've ever eaten okay so of do you eat everything when you travel i eat everything okay. everything so i'm restricting myself with the hours of eating because i'm doing this intermittent fasting but that's then why you lose weight yes that's why i lose weight and i look now <laughs> <laughs> different than i used to look one or two years before but uh, i'm eating everything and for me yes a, um, eating and the cuisine is a part of traveling and I always want to try everything local uh, you tell me to eat this, I will just eat it, I, I want to try maybe I will like it and maybe I will not like it but I need to try at least you try yes. so um, yes there were countries where I was trying really very strange uh, animals so for example in uh, um, Ecuador or Colombia or Peru I've been eating the guinea pig which is normally, it looks like a hamster. Yeah, this is, they're yes, so cute. for many people, yes, this is so cute. But for them, it's a normal uh, food. food. And yes, it's weird when you get it with their head and everything on the plate. But they have been eating this since centuries. Like if you look at the ruins of the uh, Inca houses or even the other civilizations there in the South America, in the ruins they had the enclosures under the floor of the houses where they were keeping this, these animals. Mm. So this is like since ages that they've been eating it. So it's guinea pig. Yes. How, how did you eat that? How did they cook they, it? They fried uh, like a grill on the, on the stick. And also kind of like make satay, kebab. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, what and, then, and then you look at it and, the, and you choose the one Aww, you want. <laughs> so cute. But um, what I found it very interesting in South America, in some of the churches, uh, if there was a painting of the Jesus and uh, the apostles having the last dinner, uh -huh, yeah. the guinea pig was on the table. What? Yes. Because they it's only in South America yes. like that. Because but they need to make a painting in the familiar way for the local people. With guinea pig. Yes, so there was a guinea pig uh, and, and there was a corn because this is what the local people eat there. So I, I remember I found it very interesting that Oh, on the picture, Jesus is having the guinea pig in front of him on the table <laughs> for his last dinner, last supper. Last supper, okay. Yes. And um, if I was to mention some other strange things, so for example, when I was living in Sudan, I would be snacking on the locusts. You know, this big, this insect that is uh, flying in the big uh, swarms and then it's eating like all the vegetation around. So the people, local people are actually catching them and they are just frying them and it's uh, like a snack, like a chips. Kind of like uh, yes. crackers. Yeah, like crackers. Yes, you are okay. cracking. And actually I brought quite much of this to Poland, which is my home country. And I was like, like uh, when I was invited, for example, by my university, uh, to come over and to give a speech about my life and my work. So I brought this as a snack for the people. So they like the it? other students and also the professors of the university, they've been trying to snack on <laughs> That's good. Yes. And if I give you another experiences, for example, in Ecuador, in the Amazonian jungle, I was on this kind of walk, hike for the jungle with the local guide, who is like a local person from one of the tribes living there. And he would be teaching us what are the eatable plants or what are the medicine plants in the jungle there. And then, for example, he told us about one of the plants, that this plant is having a, like a lemon taste and that inside there, there will be ants. So he, decided, he told us that he will cut this plant and then we have to very quickly lick out the plant. Uh, so like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my yeah, so you are licking them when they are still alive. But then, does it taste good? Yes. Did it taste good? It was good. It was okay. It was it's okay. not like a daily dish for me, but okay. it's okay to try it. But what is interesting? Before that, I in Africa, I tried ants as well. Really? Yes. And but in Africa, the ants that I ate, they were like a pancake of the ants. What? Yes. So actually, you, you catch a lot of ants. You make a bowl out of it, and you squash it flat, and then you fry it. Holy, okay, holy yeah. and okay. Yes. How does it taste? How <laughs> did it taste? It's a thing full of protein. Mm -hmm. and it's it's just interesting. Extra protein. Yes, I was chatting, um, with making fun with one of my friends that we should um, open a burger place, which would be ant burger instead of hamburger. It would be ant burger. burger. Okay. Yes, just putting this pancake from the fried pancake from the ants in between two pieces of the <laughs> bun, and we'll have the ant burger. Okay. And I could continue on and on about these kind of strange uh, foods, like for example, yeah, so in the Amazonian jungle I was eating piranhas and uh, to be honest it tasted for me very similar to like any, other uh, fishes? any other fish, but it's very really interesting when on the plate you see these big, big teeth of the like piranhas, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also in Africa I've been eating crocodile, I've been eating uh, different kinds of, of uh, gazelles. So, um, yeah, I'm always like eating what the local people share with me. And as I mentioned to you, it happened to me in Indonesia to eat a dolphin. And of course, yeah, I, um, uh, it, I knew, I met uh, some person who took me to the village of origin of hers. Mm -hmm. And her uncles, they were fishermen and they were going out every day to fish for the fish. And uh, then they were eating some of them to feed their family and some of them they were selling. And one day they came back. And in the net there was a dolphin. dolphin. So of course they were not fishing, they were not hunting specifically for the dolphins, it just happened to be in the net. And because dolphins they need normally to catch the air uh, when they, and he was in the net, when they took it out he was already dead. So for them... And they don't want to waste that. Yeah, they don't want to waste that, so they prepare it. Sure. And as with many dishes or cuisine from Indonesia, it was prepared in a very spicy way. So that's why when people ask me how was uh, how is the taste of the dolphin meat, I'm actually, spicy. I'm just telling them actually I don't know because there were so many spices in the, the whole dish sure. that I don't know how the uh, how is the taste how of the meat the itself. Taste. Okay. But yeah, in Indonesia I got very used to the spicy food, so I'm okay with the pedas. You're okay with pedas. For, from all this traveling, 
have you seen like the most incredible sight, incredible view so far? It's thousands or hundreds of these kind of places. So you so don't I, have favorite? No, I don't have favorite. And actually, I never liked these kind of questions. Which was the, your favorite country? Which was your favorite site? It's kind of like picking yes, which one your favorite yes, kid, right? Exactly, exactly. And there's like so many of these incredible experiences that I have and. Uh, and um, sometimes people are actually asking me, but uh, after you have seen like this kind of special wonders of the world, like the best places, aren't you just bored when you go and see again, like ag again some waterfall, again some jungle, again some mountains, again uh -huh. some museums or churches or mosques, whatever? I'm like, no, everything is different. Everything is some different experience. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still excited every time I see something, something new, and uh, and there's just so many of these very special experiences from the landscapes i really loved um, hiking the mountains in south america the ants and um, when i went to south america it was for me the first time to go above the like 4500 meters above the sea level and on the first tour like this actually in Colombia, I went on the, some guided tour and they were having even this kind of uh, device to check the level of the oxygen in your body. So like they were, you had to put your finger there and it was making like a, a, a yeah, it was checking your level of oxygen. But I was feeling totally fine. And after this, like in Ecuador, um, I went hiking. I planned to reach to the, um, to the place on the level 4,800, which, I've never been before on this level and I hear that normally most of the people just reach to that place and I was still like happy happy girl nothing I don't feel a lot at all the altitude and after having a hot chocolate in that place to warm up uh, I saw that people were some people were still going more up so I decided to continue so I reached at that time to 5100 meters above the sea level and there's this kind of excitement of being so high so during this trip in South America, I did it a few more times and I went above the 5,000 meters above sea level and I never have felt any seasickness, sorry, any high sickness, high, uh, high, high sickness, high altitude, sickness. high altitude sickness and actually the same thing is when I'm going on, on the sea. I don't feel the sea the sickness sea sea. neither, so um, I can be very happy high in the mountains and I'm very happy on, on the sea level and yeah, I actually like being on the sea. I'm I'm going diving, I'm going sailing, I'm going swimming. swimming. Uh, yeah, so I feel very good uh, in the water. So you don't have any like favorite, the most amazing side because you think everything is just like different and beautiful in its own way. Yes, like that. yes, yes, exactly. Of course, I have like so many great memories. We can add to these also, I don't know, the rice fields in China. We can add to these uh, tree. There's some beautiful, um, uh, beautiful mountains and so beautiful beaches and everything. It's so Greece is so diverse, so interesting country to come. But even your country of origin, it's so beautiful. I really love mm -hmm. it. And I've been there only to two islands, only to Java and to Sumatra. Sumatra. And uh, I try to travel around both of them. And uh, yes, I've seen the seaside, I've seen the mountains, I climbed the volcanoes. Uh, uh, so I had uh, lots of experiences there, but I know that Indonesia is such a diverse country that every island is so different. Yes. So I hope that one day I will come back again to and see, see <laughs> maybe, and that I will be having a chance to go also to discover the other islands because I think especially with the island countries, it's always that different. every island is, is having so different atmosphere, so yeah. different uh, vegetation or, or, or the animals, mm -hmm. different landscapes. Mm -hmm. so, so, so yes, uh, it's been I think almost 10 years since I was in Indonesia. Okay. A decade has passed, I don't know how that... So 2010? The last if I remember it, well, it was 2010 or 2011, might, it might be 2011 that I was there. Okay. Um, I went to Indonesia as a researcher at the Gachamata University Gachamata. in Yogyakarta and I was doing the research for my master thesis about community perspectives for disaster preparedness in volcano affected areas so I was staying near the Merapi volcano and okay I was there for the research but at the same time I was trying to, to, to discover, explore. explore the country and, uh, and yeah I really like it and Yogyakarta is kind of very relaxing city and, uh -huh. and I really like it.
Okay. Have you actually encountered or experienced the most hardest moments when you travel? You know, I'm a woman traveling sure. alone, so sometimes it's really annoying that some guys are expecting something that they are either trying <laughs> to, to flirt with you or sometimes they're even too much approaching and uh, so yes, this is one of, one of the things that sometimes men are, you. Yes, men are trying to pass uh, my personal uh, limitations that I have borders that I'm not feeling comfortable with them entering. That's one thing. Um, then I have never been robbed during my travels by a human, but I was robbed by one of the animals. What? Monkey? Yes. Oh, where? Because in Indonesia, those monkeys in Bali actually like to steal. Yes. <laughs> this happened to me in Zambia, in Africa. Okay. And actually, in my mobile phone, I have a police report about it even. Mm -hmm. I reported the monkeys the to the monkeys. police. So yes, so in, in the report it says that police is investigating. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I, I got attacked by the monkeys in the jungle. Okay, I'm this person that is walking alone, so even in, in the jungle there I was walking <laughs> alone. And then I came to the spot where there was the whole gang of the monkeys. It was, there were baboons. Oh um, my goodness. Yes, uh, with this... Uh, pink red asses <laughs> but. and one of them the, the alpha male he stood up on his back legs uh, yeah no, and no, no that's a gorilla yes yeah, that's gorilla <laughs> and he started like to walk towards me and i was having a material bag on on me and he started just to destroy my back with his uh, nails and now so he was actually attacking not me personally but my back uh, but I was trying to protect my back, so I got scratched uh, us on my hand. And when he managed to break my back, then all other monkeys they ran and started to take different items. <laughs> so, one of the monkeys took my shirt, and I have just like I was having my mobile phone with me, so after Good this thing. I was taking pictures of them. So I have a picture of monkey wearing my t-shirt. She did, <laughs> she put it through her hair. <gasps> Yes. Really? Yes. Wow, she didn't. So she, smart. she didn't put her hands for it, so it's only sure. through the neck. But I would. I have a picture of the, of her like that, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? The other took my lip balm and she started to eat it. The other took the mosquito spray and she started also like to do something with the bottle, and so on and so on. But unfortunately, one of them took my wallet, and she, she sprayed like it I was. Her. Yeah, I was having it like in the in some smaller bag, so she opened it. And she started to take my money, and she started oh to throw gosh. the money, and then just kind of like yes. <laughs> make the money flow away. Exactly, and then she took my passport, and she started to eat my passport. And <gasps> that's actually the reason why I took, took the police report because for the yes, embassy. Yes, because she ate one quarter of my passport, <laughs> so a part of one page. So it's missing, and we can see this the why? the piece, and uh, yes. But then the other monkey took my camera, my photo camera, and she started to play with it. So I spent alone with these monkeys like 45 minutes there in the jungle. Because sure. I didn't, if I wanted, I could leave. But they were having my passport. They were keeping me hostage there. And then finally came like two local guys. And when they saw the monkeys, they teased, uh, chased them away. And I started to shout at these guys, what have you done? And they're like, yeah, we, we saved you, we chased them away. I'm like, yeah, they ran out with my passport and with my camera. <laughs> so then the guys, they went into the jungle sure. and they brought me back my passport. But they didn't bring back the camera. Okay. So I don't know. If they took it. Yes, if they managed to retrieve it from the monkeys and to hide somewhere. Oh. Or if really the monkeys ran away from the camera. But unfortunately, I lost many pictures from my travels. So I had only the pictures that I took with my mobile phone, but not the pictures that they took with, with the camera. Uh -huh. So, so yes, after this I took the police reports mentioning that this, the monkeys, the baboons stole my... <laughs> so you, you didn't get, any, you have not have any experience got steal or got robbed by human, but by monkeys. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so interesting. <laughs> But also like for example, I remember even like when I was in Thailand, I was at, in some place and actually I put my bag down to take photos and I saw a monkey like coming and she took my bottle of water and took it away. 
it's like nothing. And I'm like thinking like, you stupid monkey, you even don't know what to do with it. Sure. But then I see the monkey sit down, Open it. opening the bottle and starting to drink it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Yes, exactly. You know? <laughs> and I was happy at that time that she took the bottle of water and not something else from my bag. That's good. It's like, don't leave your base on the ground. Sure, always precaution with yes. that, you know. Have you get tired? For traveling? Yeah, sometimes I'm getting tired, especially I'm having this kind of very active style of traveling, so I'm always the person that is on the move, like needs to do, needs to see as many places as possible, and like I like being on the move. But uh, then sometimes I decide to have to like more quiet day like I have today, but um, just then I just see relaxed, relaxed and actually I'm doing research about the next place where I will be going. And you're going to... I'm going to Italy, I'm going to Rome. So Gelato! <laughs> yes, and pizza and pasta. Pizza, uh, pasta, gelato. Yes, uh, but there's also so much to see in sure. Rome and in other places. So I was just today sitting lazy time on the couch and uh, and uh, relaxing research. and researching. But like normally, I'm a person that likes to be active when when, mm. when I'm on, on holidays, mm. and this is just just my style. But. For example, now I feel like a little bit, oh, holidays are already lasting too long, I'm kind of ready to stop them, but I'm awaiting uh, some, some news uh, for, from my job, but um, yeah, otherwise I'm, I'm on the way since the 9 or 10 weeks and keep on going and mm. keep on, on, on discovering. And uh, yeah, okay. I, I had already this kind of long travels that lasted even like 6 months or 10 months and uh, in this situation, you are so you need to have these days when you are super active, and you need to have this kind of day of doing sometimes uh, nothing and just chill out, uh, and, and it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Last question. Uh, you've been visited 120 countries. Which countries actually you have not visited yet? So um, there's a list of. 74 countries. I know, I 70 been, countries more uh, I haven't visited yet, so it will be difficult to mention them all. Sure. But for example, in Europe, I still have Andorra, Moldova, Litu uh, sorry, Latvia, Estonia, and Montenegro pending. Let's say in South America, these are Chile, Venezuela, Suriname, and Guyana. In Africa, there's like several different countries, but let me mention just few of them. For example, Congo, Mozambique, uh, uh, Malawi, Nigeria, and let me mention few from Asia, uh, Japan, where you used to live, but also Kazakhstan, Pakistan, uh, Philippines. And of course, there's like some these tiny, tiny, tiny countries in the Pacific Ocean that I went there to Fiji, but there's so many small uh, island, island countries there, so like uh, Vanuatu, Kiribati. So I still have places in the world that are waiting for my visits. And usually I like to go to the new places. This year we actually travel to where we can and not where we, we really want. Yeah. So, for example, because of this COVID thing. Yes. For example, now I am in Greece. I've been before to Greece, but it doesn't mean that I have been everywhere in Greece. So during this trip, um, I've visited some places where I've been before, but also like I'm discovering so many new places. Like I've never been to Crete or I've never been to uh, Santorini. And the same way, I'm going tomorrow to Italy. And uh, I will, yes, and I will go to some new places there. So so that's uh, I'm happy that there's actually still so many places to discover for me. And gila ya guys, kalau ngelihat handphonenya dia, map aplikasinya itu tuh penuh dengan red dots itu tuh kayak dia udah ke banyak tempat cuman tinggal sedikit aja yang enggak ada tanda merahnya itu sadis sih <laughs> yes so th this is the map that Nizar is talking about <laughs> so <laughs> in crazy. the red color there are the countries that I visited but as you can see there is some there's some territories in the gray color still that are awaiting my further visits and I'm hoping to to change the color on this map uh, too I think you will be done with all these countries within maybe in five years you think so I don't oh. know. Let's see. That's crazy.
I'm jealous. But I have also some friends um, who visited more than me. So, so, so yes, there are these kind of people, That's and uh, both uh, I know them in, uh, from the Polish people and from some foreigners. So and when you work yes. and everything, okay. yes. All right, itu dia ngobrol-ngobrol uh, sama Mirka hari ini tentang uh, pengalaman traveling dia. Semoga kalian suka dan bisa ngambil apa yang positif dan uh, semoga nge-trigger kita semua untuk lebih banyak traveling, lebih banyak melihat tempat baru. Terima kasih sekali lagi. Thank you Mirka. Terima kasih. <laughs> Jangan lupa like, comment, subscribe dan share. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum.